Hi, today I'm going to talk about adding supports to 3D models in Chai 2 Box. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. I've, I'm continuing on in my 3D printing journey and I've spent the last several weeks learning about adding supports to models. And it's taken quite a bit of time because, first of all, it's very important. You have to get it right or you won't be successful. But second, it's a very complex topic. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So what are supports? Supports are structures you add to a 3D model so that you can print them successfully and then you remove the supports. If you're doing FDM printing and the model's upright like this and the build plate's in the bottom, the supports look like little pillars that hold up parts of the model. If you're doing resin printing like I am and the build plate's on the top and the model suspends upside down like this, I think of them more as little hooks that reach down to support parts of the model. The reason why those are important is because, as you know, these models are printing layer by layer. And as you print a layer, every part of what you print has to immediately connect back to the build plate in some way. It can either connect back through another part of the model you've already printed, or it can connect back through a support you've added for that purpose. Now, the parts of a model that really usually need additional supports are things that extend out and down on the model. And examples here would be her staff, or really any weapon, or an elbow. And that's because often when that first starts to print, there's no other part of the model anywhere near it for it to connect to. So there you have to have a support. Now I add my supports in Chai 2 Box, which is my slicing software where I prepare the model for printing. And I thought at first I could just do research and learn how to do it, and then I could share those ideas with you. But about a week into it, I started getting the uneasy feeling that it wasn't going to be that simple. And I asked a friend of mine who's a little bit further ahead on this journey than I am about it. And he said, well, adding supports is a bit of a dark art. And he's absolutely right. There's a lot of opinions about how to do it. There's a lot of disagreeing opinions about how to do it. So as beginners, I think the best we can do is have a process that we execute and a basic understanding of what's going on and what are the levers you can tweak. And that's what I'm going to sh try to share with you today. The model I'm using, I designed at Hero Forge. I'm a supporter of their color print Kickstarter. And this is what she'll look like when she's printed in color. The reason why it's hard to give general advice on this topic is because it's affected by your particular printer and the resin you're using. But it's also different for every model you print. Now this model I'm using today is very complex and it doesn't have an obvious back. With her wings and her twisted pose, there's not really a place to hide supports. I've also removed the base and I'm going to glue her to a purchase base. But unfortunately, I'm going to lose the kitty. So here are my top line takeaways. There are no easy answers for adding supports. And if somebody makes it look easy, just remember that you can do just about anything when you're editing a video. I'm pretty sure even the experienced people don't always get it right the first time. What you can learn from videos is how the software works and the basics. And then you just have to execute your process. What's really important is to expect to fail because in fact failing is an important part of the process. I found the Chai 2 Box software to be pretty straightforward to use. After you import your model, you use these buttons to move it around to resize it and rotate it on the build plate. You can click on the faces of this cube to quickly shift to different views. When you get it where you want it, then you add supports. So now there are three types of supports, light, medium, and heavy. You can customize the settings for each one of these by selecting it and then filling the numbers in below. You can use any combination of these three types when you're in manual mode. You can add any type you want. You can remove any specific support and you can edit any specific support. But editing can be tricky when you have a lot of supports like this. There is an auto mode, but it only uses one type. It's not smart enough to choose between light, medium, and heavy. So you have to select the one you want it to use and then you tell it where you want the supports to end, either on the platform or anywhere, including on the model. 
Here's the process that's been working pretty well for me. First, you have to pick your starting settings, and I did a review of a lot of different recommendations, including the defaults in the software. I picked some conservatively heavy ones as my starting point. Then you have to position the model, and most people recommend that you tilt it backwards to hide where the supports connect. I'm scaling this up 65% so it's easier to see. And now I'm on the rotate, and you see there's colored circles for each of the different axes. I tilted her backwards 25 degrees, and now I'm in the top view, and I can see that the wing is going off of the build plate. So I rotate it to get it on, and I move it to the middle of the build plate. Now I'm ready to add supports. Now some people suggest that because auto support is not perfect, you shouldn't use it. Well, I think that's crazy. I think if you're a beginner, you absolutely should use it as a starting point. Pick platform as the place you want the supports to end, and then take a look at what it does. If you don't like where the supports are hitting your model, hit the Remove All option and reposition your model. It only takes a few minutes. If you like what you see, you can move on to the next step, which is to add supports in the places it's missed. Because we've restricted it to going to the platform, there will most likely be a few places you need to add additional supports. This bar tool on the right shows you all the layers that are going to print. And if you look at the bottom view, you can see places where things start in the middle of nowhere, the islands. On this model, the thumb and the elbow are problems and I can pick the Add Support button here and try to add it from the bottom view, but I have not had a lot of luck doing that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I've found that if I switch to the side view like this and go back and try the exact same thing, it often works. So I'm adding two supports in those areas. Another thing to look for are places where the support itself is too close to the model because sometimes these fuse together during printing. So you use the edit button and you go and you try to move them away from the model. This is tricky to do when you have so many supports that you're trying to work between. I've tried other views but all of them seem to be difficult. At this point you have Chai 2 box slice the model, you print it, and you physically examine it. You're looking for parts of the model that didn't print because they were unsupported. Here are the settings I used. The defaults on the left are for the heavy supports. Based on my review, I started with the middle settings, and they are lighter than the defaults. But based on my print, I made the contact diameter even smaller and the depth even less. These settings are lighter than the defaults for the light supports. Those are the changes I made for the top settings. For the bottom, I made changes to where it touches the model. I experimented with using a sphere as a contact shape. Did not like that. It damaged the model. So I switched it back to none, and I made the contact depth and diameter match the top, and I only have one contact point. I made no changes to the middle settings, and I set raft shape to none, so there's no raft. These are the supports generated by my first set of settings. They're pretty lightweight, but the ones on the second set are even lighter weight at the top where they connect to the model. I remove the supports that are easy to remove before curing, and then I've cured it here, and you can see that there's a lot of nubbies left on it, and I'm going to use my flush cutter to remove those, and this is what it looks like after I've done that. It's pretty good, but it was a lot of work, and there's damage here on the wing. That's why I decided to change the settings to lighter connections, and this is the second attempt. It was much easier. Most of the supports just broke off. On this one, though, I experimented with removing all the supports before curing, and I have a little bit of damage here on the inside of the wing. As makers, though, I think we're comfortable with this process. It's iteration, and it's how we learn. I chose a challenging model because to redo it, it only takes time and a little bit of resin. It's a great hobby. I have a lot of other 3D printing projects coming up. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.